Hello, what's up guys? Evil Duo Sarm here today, back with another Lost Ark video. So you did it, you made it through the story, you got to level 50, and you're wondering, what do I do now? Well, today's video is going to hopefully answer that for you. We're going to go through a bunch of different activities that are now open up to you at this point in the game, as well as how to use those different activities to continue to progress your character's gear level, do more content, and all of those good things that you want to do in an MMORPG. This whole system was super complicating to me when I got into it, and I want to make it a lot easier for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before you even think about getting started with the endgame content, you're going to want to make sure to have played the story all the way through the Shireshire region, which is the region up here through the north. So beyond the sick wolf mount that you're going to get for completing that region, you're also going to get your first set of gear, which is affectionately known as the 302 gear, or basically your first set of endgame gear that you're going to keep for a significant period of time and continue to upgrade and progress your character. It is this Crossing Paths armor set, as well as a Providence weapon, and these various accessories right here. Also, in addition to this gear, it's going to unlock a bunch of the endgame content that you're actually going to want to do, and it gives you two free level 50 vouchers, at least on the NAEU release right now, that lets you skip through the story on two more characters, so you can get some alts out here and continue to play on a bunch of different characters. So, tons of good reasons to get invested and do the entirety of the story. Now, after you have the set of 302 gear, you're probably going to want to start upgrading it, and to do that, you're going to need some different materials. The first are Harmony Shards, which are going to be in the currency bar at the top of your screen. It is the green little gemstone up there. The next item that you're going to need are going to be these Harmony Leap Stones, these larger little diamond-shaped items. And then two more items you're going to need are the red diamonds of the Destruction Stone Fragments and the blue diamonds of the Guardian Stone Fragments. So those four items are what are used to upgrade your gear. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But as far as getting those items, there's a few different options you can do, and we're going to take a look at some of the easiest ones to do, especially just starting out as a newer player. The first and easiest is going to be the Chaos Dungeon. On your map, you would be looking for this icon right here. So this little, like, winged icon, that is where the Chaos Dungeon is. You can also see it on the mini-map up here in the top right screen. If you walk up to and interact with this icon, you're going to be brought to the Chaos Dungeon UI here, and you'll see all the different drops. You can see that it actually drops that same set of 302 gear that we got for completing the Shershire region. So yes, technically you don't need to complete the Shershire region to get the gear, but it's still pretty easy, and you can also swap these pieces out before you start upgrading to find the best possible piece you can get. Same thing goes for the accessories. But you see it drops the upgrade materials we need, the Destruction Stones, the Guardian Stones, Harmony Leap Stones, and the Harmony Shards. The difficulty can be selected on the left side of the screen, or when you get to later regions across the top and then left side once again. These difficulties are broken down by your required item level, and you can't enter a new level until you've reached the level requirement. So I could enter the 340 because my level's 340, but I can't do the 380 because I'm only at 340. Because the rewards get better for each level, you're going to want to make sure to do the highest level that you can at any given time. You are only going to receive the full rewards for the first two times you run this on each of your different characters. So if you have six characters, you can run it two times on each character for a total of 12 times with the maximum rewards. Or if you're just playing one character, just run it two times on that character. Any number of times that you run it after the first two times are going to drop these currencies right here, Perception Shards or Disorder Crystals. These can be redeemed at the NPC located really, really close to it right here. For those same upgrade materials we've been talking about, so you can get more of these leap stones, shards, the stone fragments, whatever you're looking for there, you can redeem them. Also, as you progress your gear, you can pick up better accessories or re-roll different accessories using the Disorder Crystals. Now, the dungeon itself involves killing a lot of the weaker mobs in the game. You'll have a few little mini-boss type things to fight along the way, but for the most part, it's a bunch of trash mobs. So picking high AoE skills that do lots of damage are going to be the best bet. And this is actually an excellent time to bring up the concept of having two builds for your character. So if you open up the K key on the keyboard, you have a spec 1 and spec 2. One of these specs you should make AoE type abilities, the second spec you should make for killing bosses. That's because there's two basic different types of combat in this game where you're killing a boss or where you're killing mobs. And being able to switch between the two on the fly without having to readjust your points every second will help you. And that's going to be exemplified pretty clearly here with the next bit of content we're going to talk about, the Guardian Raids. The Guardian Raid is this icon on the mini-map right here, this little sort of banner with the little cross-looking thing. If you go up to this location, you'll be greeted by the Guardian Raid UI, and this is basically Monster Hunter World if it was in this game. You have a single boss you need to kill in the region. You will not know the location of the boss unless you bring a flare to mark its location on the map, so you'll need to wander around the boss arena to find it. When you do find it, you will not see a health bar on the boss, you'll have no indication of when it's actually going to die, you can break parts on some of these bosses, you can stagger these bosses. It's a ton of fun, but it is pretty challenging. So if you're just starting out, I know the first one starts at gear level 302, 
you might want to bump your gear up, especially your defensive stats a little bit, to be able to have an easier time while trying to clear this. Now since it's only one boss you need to kill, specking into a single target damaging setup is pretty useful for this. Similarly to the Chaos Dungeon, you have difficulties basically over on the left side with the different bosses having different gear requirements. And claiming rewards for this are limited to two times per day per character as well. So once again, if you have a lot of alts, you can run it on the alts and funnel the materials. Now both of these activities, the Chaos Dungeons as well as Guardian Raids, can earn bonus rewards through the Unis Task system. By pressing the Alt-J key on the keyboard, you will access this menu. So this is your dailies and weekly system, which also provides a bunch of other rewards. Now up at the top, you'll see daily and weekly challenges. Let's navigate to weekly just so we can see these two challenges we just talked about. You can see that there are chaos dungeon quests that you can accept, as well as guardian raid quests. Make sure to accept these and have these running while you're running these. That way you get bonus rewards. Make sure to pick ones that have upgrade materials, like this one provides you five upgrade materials that we looked at earlier. These provide you the harmony shards that you need. Make sure to take ones that are going to be beneficial toward advancing your character. On the daily side of things, there's a ton of different ones you can do with all sorts of different rewards. Same situation holds true. Look for upgrade materials that will help make your life easier. If you don't feel like going all over the place but still want to do your dailies, you can filter by dailies that are available on your current location by filtering by continent. That way you don't have to run all over the place. Now if you've done your daily quota of those different activities, you probably have a ton of upgrade materials in your inventory and are wondering how to go about upgrading it, how to pick which gear, all those types of questions. So let's start off with picking your best gear. Like I said, you probably have a ton of these pieces of gear. I mean, this is just from running that single chaos dungeon I just ran, tons of pieces of gear. What you want to do before you start upgrading is find whichever ones of these pieces of gear in each slot have the highest quality. So you can see like the gloves on the left that I have currently equipped have 63 quality, these ones have 48 quality. They're not as good, so keep the 63 quality. Early on, you don't really need to think too hard on this. You're not going to hold this gear forever. You're going to swap it out eventually, probably pretty quickly. So just pick the best stuff that you can slot in, and we'll upgrade those. Same goes for weapons, and then as far as accessories go, just pick ones that have good bonus effect stats. Example, if your build needs crit, then take crit. If you want swiftness for cooldown reduction, whatever you're looking for, try and find accessories that have those. Once again, you'll be swapping these accessories out pretty soon as well. But once you have your best set of gear with the highest quality equipped, you can go ahead and just dismantle everything else. Just literally run it down the line and dismantle everything else. No reason to keep it. You're going to get a ton of upgrade materials for that by hitting the dismantle button. So I got some harmony shards, destruction fragments, and guardian zone fragments. And now that you have your best set of gear picked out, if you go to the honing NPC, which is this little hammer icon on the map right here, you're looking for this little hammer icon, walk up to them and talk to them, you'll be greeted with the honing menu. And upgrading gear from here is pretty simple. All you need to do is pick the piece of gear you want to upgrade. So in this case, I'm going to go with this helmet piece right here. You're then going to click this upgrade button in the middle. You'll need to feed in those harmony shards, which I have 23,000 of from running dailies here, at the maximum value. So go ahead and hit the max button. Click on the upgrade option. So this is halfway to upgrading the gear. The next thing you need to do is use this gear honing function. So this is going to consume these guardian stone fragments for armor. And for weapons, it consumes the destruction stone fragments. You'll also need the Harmony Leap Stones. So once you've got those, you can hit the gear honing button down below, and then you'll be brought to this site here. You'll see a percent chance for success. This will drop down below 100% as you continue to upgrade. But for now, it's at 100%, I believe, all the way up to plus 6. So you can just hit the gear honing button, and it will get a guaranteed upgrade to the next stage. Each gear piece that you upgrade like this is going to boost its item level by 20. And this will also boost your overall character level by 3.333. Once again, you don't really need to think too hard on accessories. You're going to be getting a ton of these. Just slot whichever ones are best that come up as far as the bonus effect stats go. Now, once you've gotten your gear score up to 340 from doing the upgrade system, you'll be able to enter the Abyss Dungeon. Dun, dun, dun. So this is your first actual beginning difficult content here in the game. Not so much that it's difficult, but it does have mechanics that if you fail to perform the mechanics, your team will wipe. You're all going to get angry at each other and start fighting in the chat. For this reason, I would really recommend watching videos on these before you go into them just to learn what's going on. I'm going to be making my own guides on all of these different dungeon content here. So you can watch mine if you want. I'm going to start working on them next week because, you know, I didn't record my first runs on them. Oops. But based on that sentence, you can probably assume and figure out that this is a once per week piece of content. So you really don't have to rush to it. Like the second you hit 340, you don't need to like fly up and try and get it, assuming you're not on reset day, of course. In fact, I'd probably almost recommend your first time going through one of these overleveling your character's gear a little bit to give you a bit more survivability on the bosses because they do hurt. Now, once you've completed the Abyssal Dungeon, you're going to be greeted with a set of purple accessories, which will focus on your class's skill. 
and you'll also likely get a piece of the Seraphic Oath set, as well as this Knight's Oath item. As far as the accessories go, pick whichever ones have the best stats, of course. And as far as that Knight's Oath, you will need to take it to the NPC in the bottom corner here of Vern Castle. It is this sword icon right here, Craft Abyss Equipment. If you take these over to this NPC, you should be able to craft a bunch of these pieces to this set. Since you got one item as a drop, and I do believe it gives you a total of 13 of the Knight's Oaths, you should be able to craft the full set of purple gear after completing the Abyss Raid one time. At least I was able to. Now after you've crafted this piece, if you take it back over to the Honing NPC, which is the one that we just did the upgrades with a moment ago, you should be able to hit the Gear Transfer button, select the purple piece of gear from the left menu, and then select your upgraded piece of blue gear that you've already upgraded from the right menu, and it will transfer the upgrade statistics from the one piece to your new purple piece. You can then equip this full set of purple gear for a 10% damage bonus. And then you just go on and continue to upgrade that purple gear over and over and over again. And that's basically your continuous progression loop, doing those various daily activities, various dungeons, getting upgrade materials, continuing to bump your gear up until 460. Once your gear score is 460, you will unlock the next region of the game, which is Rohendel. Then you continue to upgrade and rinse and repeat and blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. Now, there are a few more facets of gear progression that are a lot more complicated, and I don't really want to cover them in this video. Things like the stone system, you have your engravings menu, you have your cards menu, all these different other types of gear progression that you can do, all need separate videos. I do just want to quickly mention with the stone side, though, you're going to be replacing these pretty quickly as you continue to progress. You really shouldn't go too crazy with these early on. Just try and find one that gets some decent stats, something like the 777 Vitality Stone isn't bad. Maybe try to find some defensive orientated stones to help you progress through the raids and give you a bailout if you die. But otherwise, don't go too crazy in focusing on these. You're likely going to replace them all within like three or four days of playing the game. To actually be able to equip these stones, you do need to take it to the facet NPC, which is this crystal icon on the map right here, this little crystal. Go ahead and talk to that NPC. Click on the stone in your inventory, and realistically, you can just mash through these for these ones, because once again, they don't matter, you're just trying to put them on. If you're trying to min-max your strategy, though, find a stat you like, like say I really want Spirit Absorption, I can take a point into this, and you see it drops the percentage rate for both of these. I can try 65% again, it failed, it goes up to 75. 65, I'll try again, I'll try the 50-50. Now this one's only a 45% chance, I think it's going to fail, so I'm going to pick this one. It did fail, so I'm back up to a 50-50. I'll try the 50-50 on the Crisis Evasion. I got it. We'll see if we fail the 45%. We didn't. We should totally fail 35. We're passing way too many down there. Unlucky. But I want to make sure that I get this last point here. So I'm going to try and bump that percentage, and we'll take the 50-50 and fail. But you get the idea. Uh, bounce between them to try and maximize your, your chances at getting whichever stat you're trying to get. But yeah, that's pretty much it with that. I'm going to make a more in-depth guide on that. Just pick a stone and put it on at this point. Once it's faceted, you can equip it. Now there's also a couple other side activities that I didn't cover, things like the cube or the tower over here that are different types of progression dungeon-based things. Like the tower, you can clear higher levels to get bonus rewards, and then if you do it on alts, you get upgrade materials that you can see right here. The cube is like a team-based progression type thing where you can quit whenever you want, and if you lose, you lose kind of game, so that's pretty cool. You also have exploring the various islands of the game to get upgrade materials, so if you click on like any square of the ocean, you'll see islands that you can do. These islands all have quests that give you upgrade materials. That's super complicated. I got tons of guides. I'll be planning on all of those. The game's still early. You're probably just getting around to this point, so I'm hoping that this will help you to progress, at least until I can make guides on the other stuff. So keeping those more complex things out of it, I think I've covered everything you need to know to get started. If you think I screwed something up, let me know. And if you did like this video and if it's going to help you, also let me know in the comment section below. Helps with the algorithm, as you all know. If you found this useful, if you're going to check out other guides on my channel, make sure you're subscribed so you stay up to date when new content comes out. I've made MMORPG guides for like seven years now, so um, I'd like to think I got a nice backlog of content for you to watch. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, look forward to seeing you at the next YouTube video right here, Twitch livestream on the weekends, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.